Welcome to the Real Fake News on kpcradio.com, a critically sarcastic analysis of news. In this show, we'll differentiate the real news from the fake with the help from comedians, college professors, advocates, and experts. Today, we will discuss education, veganism, opium-addicted parrots, and more. Today is Wednesday, February 20th. It's 1.36 p.m. I'm your host, Jesse Bertel. Joining me here today, we have L.A. comedian and producer for Discovery and Animal Planet, Richard Velasquez, who has booked shows at Echoes, Stokely's Cafe and Social House, and Haha ha Cafe, and community organizer and LAUSD teacher, Ankur Patel, who's very prominent in local social activism and has run for local office. Hello, Richard. Hello. How are you? Good. And uh, Hi, Ankur. How you doing? Good. Thank you. Thanks for being here, guys. So our discussion is going to be formatted in the game of Real News Fake News, where I'm going to present real news stories or fake news stories, and I'll ask you about it. Guys good with that? Sounds Sounds good. good. Okay. Now that we know the rules, let's play the game. You guys ready to go? Let's Let's do it. it. In Real News... Governor Gavin Newsom signed SB 126 into law. Now, advocates say that the bill would ensure charter schools are held to the same standards of transparency, excuse me, transparency and accountability as public schools. Uh, Pros, cons. I know Encore here uh, used to work for a school board and you're a teacher. What do you think about this? Overall, I think it's a good move for transparency. We've got so much uh, state resources going to public education, but a lot of the times we don't see the results, right? People aren't informed on what's going on. People don't know how government works. Uh, There's so many flaws in public education and making sure that we're getting the resources we need to our public schools has turned into a political battle where we have organizations and institutions like the California Charter School Association that's funding political agendas and funneling money away from public schools to charter schools. And sometimes, sometimes these charter schools are not above board. There was this example of El Camino High School over here in uh, the West Valley, pretty close to Pierce College, where the principal was going to Montes on taxpayer dollars, having steak, (laughs) traveling around, all sorts of other things where it wasn't transparent, right? And because the board of directors of that charter school was appointed, was best friends, who's who type of thing, it became uh, easy to sweep it under the rug, hide it out, and then it wasn't until there was some more investigation, some, uh, I guess, whistleblowers uh, put that information out there. So this bill at the state level requires that charter schools follow the same rules as school districts in terms of meetings, posting information, uh, all those sorts of transparency, which is generally good governance. So I think it's a good thing. I mean, it it sounds now like what you were talking about is like New York City public schools in the 80s where <laughs> there were there was nothing for us, right? We didn't get anything. There was no transparency in where the money was being spent. These charter schools sound a little bit like the mob, the guys going out there mm-hmm. and having stakes at Monty's on my dollar. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'd, I'd rather have the kids playing sports or doing something constructive. So uh, to me, transparency is always um, sort of the bastion of truth. Right. That's that's where if you're not lying or doing something crooked, you should be transparent and have no fear about being that way. So it sounds to me like a good thing. The bill sounds good to me the way you guys put it. But anything negative about it that you can foresee? Uh, This is just one step. Right. There's a whole big conflict from Betsy DeVos at the federal level trying to go with vouchers and funnel public money into Christian colleges or Uh, Catholic schools or whatever it may be, all the way down to local school districts competing with charter schools for students. And we also know that beyond the transparency, our charter schools cherry picking, right? We know, uh, and right now I'm teaching at Olive Vista Middle School out in Silmar, and there's this thing called co-locations. And and again, a lot of good intentions leading to problematic solutions. This idea of co-location was there are a lot of schools, LAUSD or across California where all the classrooms aren't being used. So if classrooms aren't being used, why don't we let a charter school use them uh, and operate a school? Initially, that sounds like okay, but it's basically turned into at at Ola Vista Middle School where the co-located charter school in the past was inviting the gifted and the magnet students and those folks to join their charter school while the special ed kids Um, were not. 
Oh, uh, recruited. So mm. you have all these different nuances in uh, the charter school and public school kind of uh, conflict. I don't want to call it a conflict, but it's definitely a difference of opinion on the future of public education, what it looks like, best governing strategies. And so this one bill in terms of transparency holding charter schools to the same as public schools is just one little part of this larger struggle that we're in. So you're trying to say that they they only had the, the heathen slow kids in the other class and they had all the smart kids who were Christian in the other class? We'll take the good ones. <laughs> yeah, you know, morally good and super smart. That sounds crazy. Uh, sounds crazy, but it's, it's self-selecting, right? Also in terms of parents knowing how to get their kids the resources. So even if you have a special ed kid, if you have the capacity to get a lawyer or you know how to get uh, an IEP, an individual education plan, you can request a BII, a behavior intervention specialist, so that now your kid gets a adult following them around and helping them because you knew how to work the system and ask for things that every kid should have but because people are in a position to know how to get it they get it and that's been the bifurcation of public education in in not just the state of california but across the country and we definitely have a long way to go with education all right let's move on to the next story In fake news, the Young Turks reports that Bernie Sanders' CNN town hall was infiltrated by establishment operatives. They pointed out that the audience was deceptively labeled to disguise the questioner's corporate relationships. So what do you guys think about this? Is this news or a conspiracy theory? Should they be open about their possible conflicts of interest in asking specific questions? And was it intentional by CNN? I I have to imagine this was intentional. Um, CNN has been caught sort of doing this thing many times in the past. And and I think that at this point, they're relying on the masses to be lazy because these mm-hmm. are things that are easily fact-checked. Even if you're not an expert researcher, you can go online and find out in on the LinkedIn uh, 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 links where these people are working. And it clearly stated that some of these people were part of Democratic parties. Yeah. So it, it, it seems like like CNN is is trying to act extremely liberal, but at the same time counting on liberals being lazy. Right. I mean, that sounds about right. Useful idiots comes to mind to me, right, in terms of framing the message, who's asking which questions, and how, what, what angle or what perspective gets presented. I mean, it's just part of do your research, find out what's going on, but then that could get into a whole different part of how do you do research? Do we even know how to do research? <laughs> right. yeah. I mean, I, I feel like I can't agree with anyone's opinion unless I do a deep FBI background <laughs> check, you know, to find out where this person's leanings have been for the last 20 years. It's getting complicated. And it's even then, really the FBI may be in on it. The, the, you know? Right. Because according to, to the new organization, uh, to, to the uh, the Trump administration, the FBI is suspect as well. We've, we've counted on, on the FBI to do all investigations forever, and now we can't trust them either. The fine line between real news and fake news. And that's the whole point of this show is it's really difficult to even uh, for someone who's educated and has a research degree. It's hard to know what is true anymore. Um, And that's why you get, I think, people so far off that they're willing to believe the earth is flat or there is no space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want everybody's immunization reports in this room. Okay, I want to know if I'm going to get measles or something. Okay. All right. Well, let's do one more story here. In real news, according to Vice, opium-addicted parrots keep raiding poppy farms in India. This makes it difficult for opium farmers, and it was reported that the the parrots were obviously becoming intoxicated from the poppies, often crashing into trees and branches, or being found lazy in a nearby field, having indulged on the drug. And then, of course, once they sober up, they come back for more, and this is a a real problem. What do you guys think about this? Is this the natural solution to the opium crisis? I mean, I think this begs the question as to what kind of consciousness they're experiencing experiencing, right? I mean, you know, there are there other animals that are like sober in their group? You know what I mean? Is there like a 12-step program for parrots? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like like Tweety's out there talking about, I'm an addict. I'm sorry. Sylvester's been driving me crazy. I'm stressed out. So bring on the opium. You know, uh, you know there are other animals that do this. Um, they're not just parrots. So I was doing some research and I saw that I was doing some research in the past on this because I was writing jokes about these parrots. Oh. And I found that wallabies also get high on opium. So I'm wondering, is there like a parrot wallaby cartel? Uh, you know, and, and are they getting together to get the best opium and then trade? Or is there a battle between the groups? Yeah, are they are they like warring? You know, I'd imagine the parrots might have the advantage. They yeah, got the skies. They right? got the turf yeah, yeah, covered. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what you, what yeah, man, this, it's interesting to see that. What is it? Hundreds of thousands of acres. I didn't see the exact number of opium is being grown in Madhya Pradesh and. 
they can't get government regulation. I mean, who's looking after it? these? The article goes into how the farmers are protecting these poppy fields in the middle of the night from these right. birds, and it's just like a confusing it's type like of. Why? Where's the industry? How's it going? Didn't we go into Afghanistan and That's weren't right. there like huge fields of opium yep. in Afghanistan yes. that our soldiers were protecting? How's right. this all connected? That's exactly yeah, I was what in I started. Afghanistan and I saw the poppy fields, man, and it's crazy because I was right. I was embedded with the U.S. Army. Oh, and you were? Yeah. When I, was this? I did a, uh, this is back. I want to say eight years now. I did a show called Heroes of Hell's Highway oh, for okay. Discovery, where we went out and rode on Route One looking for IEDs every day. Oh, wow. And, um, you ru- looking for IEDs. Looking for IEDs, yeah. So the show was only good if I got blown up and when I figured that out, <laughs> I realized what an idiot I was to be there. Get out of but, there. But anyhow, you know, we would drive by these huge opium fields and we never stopped to do any enforcement. And that's sort of that's sort of what you're leaning towards. Like, what what is actually going on with this opium? Is it okay or is it not okay? Because the pharmaceutical industry uses some mm-hmm. of these products. Mm-hmm. So there's got to be big pharma involved in this as well. Yeah, well, I mean, I thought it was just a funny issue, but apparently it's more serious than I... Well, according to the parrots, it is. Uh, <laughs> the parrot families are upset. Oh, man. All right, well, I guess we're ready for another news story. Real news. In real news, NBC reports that Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is to be indicted on corruption charges. The announcement marks the first time in Israeli history that a sitting prime minister faces criminal charges of this nature. Uh, Is this serious or a liberal witch hunt as Netanyahu dismissed it? You know, if I may, he always seemed so likable to me, just as a sort of cult of personality. You know, I I always thought he was he was sort of well spoken and, and seemed kind of moderate in his views, even though he's a Zionist. And I know that. Um, but I mean, he, his nickname is BB. Like, <laughs> like this is what you call your blanket or your teddy bear. Like, how bad can the guy be? I don't know. It seems like he's committed some pretty serious crimes. You know, I, I also came across the idea that you know he's a huge admirer of Trump, and we right. all know these indictments are flying around. So maybe he just really wanted to impress the guy by getting indicted as well. <laughs> you know, I, wants I to be in the indicted yeah, buddy club. <laughs> exactly. I don't know what his what his thought process is. I really don't. It seems like he's sort of veered right, left, some which way. He was okay? right as soon as he got into office, actually. He took office after Itzhak Rabin was assassinated mm-hmm, mm-hmm. by right-wingers, and that's kind of been his political trajectory. Just recently, he's aligned himself with even APAC, right, mm. which is way conservative, yeah. called the new political party that he aligned himself with as racist. Yeah. So he's been on this rightward trajectory. This is just pushing him further and further, and it seems like him and Trump have gotten along real well, but from... I, and it's a tricky conflicted issue, right? Ilhan Omar is getting all sorts of labels as the, the, the newly elected congresswoman uh, talking critically of Israeli government and some of their decisions in occupied West Bank or Gaza. You can't even use the word occupy. I was going to say, they just tried to introduce some legislation that you can't even speak against Israel. That's been going on. That's uh, been going on. So Benjamin Netanyahu is guilty, in my opinion. Uh, uh, the, the, the two specific ones look like he was getting favorable coverage from uh, this news agency and that telecommunications company yep. because he was cutting deals with them. He spent so like $280 million to get that done. Well, that's the, that's whose money was allegedly. It, it yeah. wasn't his money, right? Yeah, it correct. was Israeli taxpayer money. So that's this right. attorney general, who's also kind of conservative, is just finally gotten fed up with how. To, I guess there must be a lot. This is a two-year investigation, yeah. and the other criticism that got labeled was because this is like six weeks before their election or something. It's opportune moment, but didn't that happen here? Like with the FBI investigation and and what's the timing? I think it's better for this stuff to come out before an election than after an election, anyway. I mean, at this point, Fox News is almost like state radio or state television, <laughs> okay? And so it sounds like he was trying to achieve the same mm-hmm. goal as his buddy Trump <laughs> in controlling all of the information that comes out about him. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's what dictators do. Um, but it's interesting that this is such a small charge. Again, I mean, there's so much that could be he could be trying. I mean, what do you? What do you think? The Al Capone thing, man. Mm. You get him on something, on it's better money. than nothing. Yeah, taxes, well, taxes, taxes. Well, I know with uh, with uh, Trump, they're really pushing for the, the Russia Gate thing. Or the, uh, I think <laughs> but, that was a mistake. Yeah. But I think the taxes the are, taxes are with him. That at. is where he, he needs to be. Follow the money. And the way that Michael Cohen laid it out, it's obvious that he inflated some properties and value when it benefited him and deflated him at other times. That's so, that's 
IRS fraud. I don't want to go too far down this rabbit hole, but I did three seasons of The Apprentice. No okay? way. No. As an audio <laughs> operator. Okay? Condolences. Oh. And the man, <laughs> hey, thank you. I needed it. My ears, you know, I lost an IQ point a day, I like to say. <laughs> but you got to know the Don, right? But I got to know the Don. I so. flew in his private helicopter. I've eaten with the man. He knows me personally. Oh, yeah? He knows my name. Can you bring him in on the show? Or something? I, you know, <laughs> I don't think he would like what I have to say <laughs> these days. I can't lie. You know, the long story short is the man is an example exaggerated personality we helped create his image mm -hmm. um I, I, not to go too far i did sign an nda but now he's the president so i don't really care um one of the things that that just to give you a small example we had to rent furniture for his office and there wasn't one company that would rent us any furniture because he is personally known not to pay oh of course okay yeah. and so th that's an example he's always exaggerating something some whether it's his money or his personality or or his relationships that's just his nature mm -hmm. and just to maybe put a point on it though when you get into these positions of power doesn't matter how you get there you then can continue your uh consolidating power and ability putting people into positions of influence and implementing your political agenda like benjamin netanyahu who's been doing in israel and how trump is doing with his family the they got security clearance Ivan ivanka does not need Security clearance, <laughs> yeah. okay? Well, she needs security clearance to get through with those bags she's smuggling out of the shopping store. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, right? <laughs> All right, let's go to the next and last story of the day. In fake news, according to the Roundup, Pierce College newspaper, I probably shouldn't call them fake news because I actually work for the Roundup, but anyway, <laughs> <clears throat> uh, the Vegan Society wants to ban all processed meats from campus. Uh, what do you guys think about this? Richard, would you be happy about them taking away your pepperoni on your pizza? No. And, you know, look, this reminded this reminds me of Demolition Man. Are you guys familiar with this movie, Wesley Snipes? Oh, yeah, it's been a Sandra while. Sandra Bullock. It's been a while, okay? But but there's a paragraph that I have here. It's short. Okay. And I just want to read this yeah. really quickly, okay? Um, see, according to Cocteau's plan, I'm the enemy because I like to think. I like to read. I'm into freedom of speech and freedom of choice. I'm the kind of guy, if I want to sit in a greasy spoon and think, gee, I should have the T-bold steak or the jumbo rack of barbecue ribs with a, a side order of gravy fries. I want high cholesterol. I want bacon. I want butter and buckets of cheese, okay? I want to smoke a Cuban cigar the size of Cincinnati in a non-smoking section. I want to run through the streets naked with jello all over my body reading Playboy magazine. Why? Because I suddenly might feel the need to, okay? I've seen the future. You know what it is? It's a 47-year-old virgin sitting around in his beige pajamas drinking banana broccoli <laughs> shake, a banana broccoli shake singing, I'm an Oscar Mayer wiener. Okay? Like, you got to live on top. They're in the booth on this. Yeah, I don't know. These guys, are, they're, they're losing it. The long story short is this, okay? I believe in personal freedom. If I'm getting an education at a college, then I should be able to decide what to put into my body. Absolutely. I don't need someone policing, p policing my nutritional uh, intake, much like I don't want them policing what's going in my brain. Mm -hmm. So to me, this seems like overreach. I just think it's too far. I'll give you a different perspective. And I agree on policing is overreach and telling you exactly what you do. But we're in the middle of the sixth mass extinction this planet has seen. Global warming. It's not just global warming. It's a climate catastrophe, chaos. We're, we're destroying the planet. Health, obesity, diabetes. Uh, uh, the way that animals are treated, it's gross. It is inhumane. And... It's if you've been to a pig vigil over at Farmer John's, seeing these pigs roll up, it's like the Holocaust. Truck after truck, they don't they get truck from wherever, and they don't even get water. So it's an intersectional issue: uh, animal agriculture, the farming of meat products, um, and not not just environment, health, uh, animal safety. It's a uh, 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 immigrant issue, right? Who who's in these factory farms murdering these animals with and, and it causes mental issues it tend to be migrant workers it tends to be illegal uh, undoc i don't want to say illegal immigrants i'm sorry undocumented mm -hmm. folks it's a it's a feminist issue right the way that these animals are cows to produce milk raped and their babies are separated from them i mean there are so many different issues that we can get to and as a hindu i ain't telling you you can't have bacon i'm just asking you to think about it a little bit more are you vegan I'm almost there. I'm at like well, 99%. Well, is actually currently ag advocating for more vegan options in public schools. Got yeah, it. we just got oh, a resolution. Oh, so I went directly against your position. <laughs> hey, hey I'm, you're funny. It's good to be on. You need to have differences of opinion and be able to talk it out. We can elevate the mm -hmm, conversation mm -hmm. when we can do it. That was a great quote of Demolition Man. That was kind of funny. <laughs> I, I enjoyed it But, too. Encore, do you think that the meat ban is going too far to get to that goal? Well, the thing about the meat ban here at Pierce specifically is it's not targeting all meats either. It's targeting processed meats, which is now been 
been labeled a level one carcinogen yeah, by bacon, the World Health Organization. The bacon is included, and I don't know. <laughs> bacon there, is good, man. There, there's all sorts of vegan alternatives. I just, a, I just you know, suggest you start looking for some of the alternatives when do, you can. But <laughs> Impossible Burger just don't taste. Turkey good. bacon, ah. maybe, but tofurkey <laughs> bacon, I don't know. And and I, I'd parallel this to say our reliance on fossil fuels, right? The energy technology is evolving. We're getting off of fossil fuels and. Uh, uh, wind and solar is evolving in the same way our food science mm. is going to evolve and develop as well. So again, I'm not trying to tell you what you can and can't do, but you know, think about it a little bit more. And then if you can lower your meat consumption, don't rely on it all the time. That's a, that's an important step. And, and uh, again, all these issues, it's intersectional. Just but again, is, that's part of the research, right? Do your own research and figure out. Right. You made me think. I'm not going to lie. You're making me think. I so that. That you, you've achieved, you've achieved <laughs> your goal. Okay. You got me thinking. Well, I mean, but is is it possible that we can fix some of those problems without banning, I mean, without going after meat itself, but actually the way that we do the meat? I mean, there's ways to do, uh, you know, pig farms that are environmentally friendly and still people can eat their bacon and feel good about it and not... The, the reason I can't argue Maybe not their cholesterol, to, but... You know, I've traveled internationally quite a bit and I've seen animal slaughter in many different cultures. And I have to say, while I enjoy my bacon, I did not enjoy the squealing of the pig while it was dying. There's no compassionate slaughter. Hmm. It just doesn't happen. I mean, you could call it that, but... It just doesn't happen that way. And especially at the scale. If you're trying to feed everyone yeah. meat product it at becomes, the scale, it becomes, it becomes a factory. It, it, and, and then it becomes unsustainable even more. It takes more space. It takes more resources to to farm these animals with that level of attention. My so, dreams tonight are going to be filled with squealing <laughs> sounds. Oh. Yeah, this is very complicated. <laughs> was that real issue. news? Um, <laughs> was that too real? <laughs> it's a little yeah, too brought, real, I think. It's supposed to be fake news. But <laughs> unfortunately, that is all the time we have for our news stories. But before we go, I wanted to give both of you a chance to uh, promote or tell the viewers where they can find out more about what you were doing. Uh, Ankur, would you like to start? Just add me on Facebook. Ankur, A-N-K-U-R, Patel, P-A-T-E-L. My Twitter is Vote Patel. I've ran for office before i'm not running for anything now but pay attention your vote matters and everything we do has ripple effect and future consequences uh, richard you can follow me at uh on instagram at, at uh, richie v comedy um i also have a show this coming saturday it's called saturday night laughs at stokely's cafe and social house on 3500 west pico boulevard at 9 p.m will be hosted by the wonderful kalia mcneil she's an amazing comedian um so come check me out Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much uh, for joining me today. And uh, I really appreciate you coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thanks to our listeners for tuning in. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Patreon at Jesse Bertel. Tune in to The Real Fake News every Wednesday at 1.30 p.m. on kpcradio.com and on my YouTube page at The Real Fake News. Real Fake, Real Fake, Real Fake, Real Fake News. Clear. Nice. Nice job, guys. Thanks. That was awesome. That was good. fun. I had a good time. <sighs> <sighs> you guys enjoyed it, huh? <laughs>